Hello and welcome to the Scientific Adventures of Beard Man. Today we're going to be looking at a concept builder on physicsclassroom.com under the topic relationships and graphs and it's the first one titled experiments and variables. So today we're going to be looking at how to design an experiment, how to write, write about an experiment, and how to uh, uh, record your data or review your data. Um, so first of all, experiments. Most experiments are done in order to determine the effect of one variable on another variable. Well, before we can understand that definition completely, let's make sure we know what a variable is. A variable is a quantity whose value can change. Something like distance. Distance, you could have a distance of 6 meters, of 12 meters, of 14 meters. So that is a variable because it is a quantity, the distance is a quantity, and that value can change depending on the situation. So uh, notice now let's jump back. So uh, the, uh, most experiments are done in order to determine the effect of one variable on another variable. How long should I bake my cake? The number of minutes I spend baking my cake uh, will affect the tastiness of my cake. Okay, maybe that's not exactly a quantity tastiness. Well, let's make it one. Scale one to 10, how tasty was it? There you go. Now it's a, a quantity. Okay. <clears throat> so we set up uh, an experiment to change one variable. So we intentionally change one of them, the one we want to see the effect of one variable on another. So we change one variable while watching its effect on another variable. And while we do that, we want to keep everything else constant so that we don't have something else changing um, our variable. We can see a classic experiment over here. You have salty water, fresh water, egg floats here, doesn't float here. You could talk about the buoyancy of the egg in terms of numerical. All right, so variables, independent variable. The independent variable is the variable that is being actively changed by the experimenter. So in our last one, the independent variable would have been how salty the water was, the salinity of the water. Dependent variable, the variable which is observed in order to determine how it changes due to the change in the independent variable during the experiment. So we change the salinity, the independent variable, and we watch how does the buoyancy change. Or in the example over here to the right, um, the independent variable is the light color. We have a yellow light here, we have a red light here. We want to figure out how the plant height changes. So two weeks later or whatever, how tall is this one? How tall is this one? Was the red light more effective than the yellow light? Okay, if you want to make that a variable, you could talk about the frequency of the light. Um, each color has a frequency, so you could just change the frequency and make it very numerical. Okay. Um, and then finally, we have control variables, which are variables that are held constant. So we want to make sure we give them the, both the same amount of water, right? If we give this one five times as much water or this one no water at all, then clearly the only thing we're testing is not the light. The amount of water might have an effect on how uh, big each of these grow. So we want to only change one thing and watch how it affects one thing and hold everything else constant. We don't want to check one after a day and the other one after a week because probably that extra six days to grow might have had an impact. So we want to see if we want to see the effect of the light on the height of the plant, we have to keep all these other things constant. All right. So in the apprentice level, we have uh, sentences. Uh, this is basically how to write a purpose. So to write your purpose, the, the kind of the introduction to the lab, you state to determine the effect of, and then you put the independent variable here. Okay, let's write that in. I'm going to abbreviate it. Independent variable upon the dependent variable. And then yada, yada, yada. They might have other stuff uh, there to explain that. Okay, so here's some examples to determine the effect of the number of batteries upon the speed of a toy car as it races across the kitchen floor. That means number of batteries is your independent variable and speed of the toy car is your dependent variable. You're changing this to see how it affects that. 
Next experiment, here's the purpose to determine the effect of salinity upon the buoyancy of an egg in a nice tall glass of cool water. Notice cool water, that's a constant variable. It's not one of the ones we're talking about here. Um, by the way, the apprentice level, what it does is it gives you a purpose like this and it asks what's the independent variable, what's the dependent variable. So to determine the effect of salinity, that means you're gonna change the salinity. That means it's the independent variable. Okay, upon the buoyancy of an egg. So effect of, here's the independent, upon the buoyancy. Okay, now you don't have to use the word upon, it doesn't have to exactly say the effect of, so you may have to adjust that a little bit. A lot of them use this same phrasing. So once again, salinity independent, buoyancy dependent. To determine the effect of light color, upon the height of a plant. These are the ones we talked about, right? So here's a nice purpose to determine the effect of the light color. Okay, and if you wanted to be more physics, you could say the frequency of the light, okay, upon the height of the plant. There's the dependent variable. Independent, whoops, independent, see how it affects the dependent, height. <coughs> So don't be thrown off with the other stuff that gets thrown in at the end of some of these, like across the kitchen floor. We're not measuring the kitchen floor. It's the speed that we're looking at. Okay. All right. Next level, level, master level, experimental design. So now how do we write a procedure? We now have a purpose. We did that here. Determine the effect of something on something else. How do we write a procedure? Well, a good procedure changes the independent variable while allowing the dependent variable to change. It also does not allow any other variable to affect the dependent variable. In other words, we hold them constant. Okay, so we hold everything else constant. So let's uh, see how they uh, help you figure this out. The thing. So you'll get a statement like this. A student lab group is brainstorming the design of an experiment that moves a eula and, and uses a uh, hygrophius, um, which measures dysoria, and the maguana to determine how much the maguana affects the dysoria. Okay, and then you'll click through a bunch of different post-it notes to describe the most effective design. First of all, I need to admit this and this and this and this are all made up words. And the point is that in the, in the concept builder, there are no made up words, but some of them may not be familiar to you. You may not know what an ammeter is. Okay. You may not know some of the other terms that are in the statement, but if you look at the thing, those unknown words, we can still figure out what it is. Okay. So first of all, the EULA is just something that's going to move. It, it's the object that this uh, experiment is being done on. So we don't have to worry too much about the EULA uses a hygrophius, so that's some sort of uh, measuring device. And then here we see our first uh, variable, the dysoria, okay? And the magu maguana is the other variable here. Determine how the maguana affects the dysoria. So this right here, okay, is our purpose. How does the maguana affect the dysoria? Okay, so since maguana is the thing that we're changing, we're seeing how it affects it, this will be the independent variable. And then this is the thing being affected, so this will be the dependent variable in this problem. Okay, all right, I gotta go back. There we go. Okay, so how do we design an experiment? Well, we have to make sure that we're changing the independent and then measuring how the dependent changes. So we wanna pick a value for our Maguna. Okay, so move the ULIS, the Maguna measures, and I made up some units here. You'll see units um, in, the, in the problem and you may or may not know what those are. So once again, no one knows what these are, but we can still do this, do this problem. Okay, so whether you know them or not, don't worry. So we're going to move, we're going to, uh, we're going to uh, set a value for the, our independent variable, and then we'll record the value of our dependent variable. Okay, so we're going to do something with a set 
value for the independent variable and measure the dependent variable. Then we want to be very careful not to change anything else. I don't have much in the way of constant variables here. So you want to make sure you don't see anything else changing. Sometimes you'll see random things thrown in. Um, you're like, why would that change? Well, it shouldn't. Don't pick that one. Okay. The only thing that should be changing is the independent variable. And then you're measuring what happens to the dependent variable. So the next step might be something like now you move it at a different amount of EK, whatever that is. EK. Okay, so instead of 45, 90 eek. And doubling it isn't a bad idea for the first one, and then kind of go in a pattern. So you don't you get them pretty well spaced out. You don't get clumped up values like 45, 46, 47 probably wouldn't give you a good graph. We'll get to that towards a little bit later on. So then record the value of the dependent variable. Okay, so once again, we changed the independent variable and we're recording the dependent variable. Then finally, uh, we measure a whole bunch of other ones. Now that we've set the basic idea of it with the first two here, we just put one and we get these five values. By the way, three values is pretty small. We're gonna graph these in the end and see is this a linear or an inverse or a quadratic relationship, which you may not be familiar with those terms yet, um, but we're gonna graph them. And if you have ever graphed anything in math, you know that if you've got three points and one of them's off by a little bit, it changes it from a straight line to a curve really easily. And since we're doing real science and measuring things with some error, something that should be a straight line might end up looking like a curve. So if you have at least five data points, okay, then that will give you, uh, make it so that any little errors don't get magnified. And you can see that, yeah, this should have been a straight line, even though there's some um, variation there. So five values is good. Um, in this, I wouldn't worry too much about it in this particular uh, thing here. So uh, each time record the value of the dysoria measured on the hygrophius. Okay. And so um, that means we're once again measuring the dependent variable while we change, oops, change the independent variable. All right, so uh, then let's move on to the wizard level. Clear that and off we go. Okay, I guess I've still got it. There we go. Um, so the independent variable is... So here we're going to be working towards making a graph of our data. Okay, so we've got our Maguna and we've got our uh, dysoria or whatever it might be. And now we have to turn it into a graph so that somebody can look at our data and very quickly see what the relationship between these two things is. Okay, so the, the biggest thing you need to know is that the independent variable goes on the x-axis. That's down here. The horizontal axis is the x-axis and the dependent variable goes on the y-axis. So apparently this graph that I just pulled off the internet has a length as the independent variable, meaning they were changing the length of something and they were watching how the time squared changed. Okay, why they were doing that, I can't even begin to imagine. Time squared, that's a weird thing to be measuring. But for some reason, for their experiment, that was important. So they measured the length compared to the time squared. Let's go through an example. So you'll see a little statement like this. Standing waves and anaconda are studying, are conducting a study of the effect of dysoria upon Maguna. Which notebook entry accurately identifies the variables and displays the best choice for a plot? So first of all, setting the effect of dysoria. This time dysoria is going to be our independent variable upon Magu Maguana. Okay, so... Uh, here we have our independent. We're changing that and we're going to see how that affects the dependent. Okay. All right. So uh, let's, there we go. So the dependent variable is, oh no. Oh yeah, the dependent variable. That's what I said. Whew, I got that right. Dependent variable is Maguna. I'm just used to listing the independent variable first, but I didn't do that this time. Independent variable is Dysoria. Independent variable is Dysoria. So that means our independent variable should go on the x-axis, in which case it'll be down here. 
and our dependent variable goes on the y-axis, which is the vertical over here. Okay, um, so that's all you're going to be looking. You're going to be making sure that you have the right one identified as dependent and independent, a lot like the apprentice level. But then you're also looking to see that the independent is on the x-axis and the dependent is on the y-axis. All right. Uh, hopefully this not only helps you get through this concept builder, but helps you learn a little bit about how to design and write and report on a laboratory experiment in physics. Uh, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. If you have any questions, put them down in the comments, and I'll see you the next time on the scientific adventures of Beard Man.